When Donald Trump was president, why didn't he end the use of chemtrails? And if he gets reelected, will he be able to expose the connection between East Palestine and all of these strange fish being pulled out of rivers all over the Midwest? Is that something that would be a priority? Should he tell the truth? Should he come out and reveal why he continued to use chemtrails and push the jab? And why he's been strangely silent about what's going on with the contamination in the Midwest? Well, in today's video, we're going to kind of lay out the previous four years, not the last three. Everybody's talked about Biden since 20, 2021. I think we need a reminder. I think we need a refresher on 2017, 18, 19, and 20, and some things you may have forgotten about, and questions perhaps you wanted to ask, but you forgot to. Now, those of you who have continued to file in over the Florida Maquis Patreon channel, God bless every one of you. Thank you so much. Everyone who shows up here every day for the conversation, I sure do appreciate it. But those of you over at Patreon, you are making a massive, massive difference. It gives me the ability to have parity against, well, those who don't want the truth exposed. Those who don't want to hear the truth on either side. It's only one U.S. dollar per month, even less, even less than that, three pennies a day. If you sign up for an entire year, fully refundable, first 90 days, so no risk to you. Over there, we can kind of take the gloves off. We can show images and talk about things in ways that sometimes hurt people's feelings, but isn't that what protected speech is really all about? But I don't want to take up too much of your time today. I know it's Sunday. Last night, I put up a poll, 15 hours ago, actually, and it, the question was very specific and worded a specific way. The question didn't say, who do you think should be president or who would be a better president? The question was, who would have a better chance of beating Joe Biden in 2024. Now, this poll clearly shows cognitive dissonance and a little bit of bandwagon. You see, we've already had Donald Trump run against Joe Biden and lose for whatever reason. And that's actually an argument that a lot of people don't think about. If, if Donald Trump inspires so much hatred that people are willing to do things that are perhaps morally questionable at the polls. Wouldn't it be a smarter choice to get conservatives in office to find somebody who didn't inspire that much hatred? Just based on wanting results at the end of the day? Well, as you can see here, 81% think we should go back to the last four years instead of moving forward. But I want to just keep the receipts, and I want to talk about things factually so that people understand what their choice is here so that they can have the real truth. We have a guy who supports Disney, and here's the receipt. Governor DeSantis is allegedly being absolutely destroyed by Disney. Originally PR plan fizzled, so now he's going back with a new one. Disney's next move would be the announcement that no more money will be invested in Florida, as if Florida needs Disney. Because of the governor, in fact, they could announce a slow withdrawal. Basically, this is governor, pardon me, Trump, coming out on the side of Disney against Governor DeSantis. This is Donald Trump's son urging conservatives to end their boycott of Bud Light. Pretty much tantamount to supporting the trans agenda, the Dylan Mulvaney agenda. This is a tweet from Donald Trump in 2018, strongly pushing comprehensive background checks with an emphasis on mental health, raising the age to 21 for purchasing a weapon and ending the sale of bump stocks. Congress is in a mood to finally do something on gun control, this issue, I hope. This was 22 February, 2018. And I've played this video before. It's very easy to find. It's easy to find him saying this. I like taking guns away early. Take the guns first, go through due process second. This is who you chose over Governor DeSantis. 
I hope everyone remembers that they're getting the, the good old jab. That if I wasn't president, you wouldn't be getting that beautiful jab for five years at best. And probably not getting it at all. Warp speed. Alex Jones, left out to dry. Good buddy of the Clintons. Pin an award on Fauci. Fact. Stood by and asked all of Congress to stand up and give a standing ovation, just like he did to Hillary Clinton after he got elected. Gave her a standing ovation. Gave a random guy named Juan after the failed coup in Venezuela a standing ovation that he was the representative of freedom. Signed deals with Muslim Islamic dictators. This is Muhammadu Bahari, who was quoted as saying that he would never stop in his life pressing for the uh, global caliphate. That Islam is the only way forward. And of course, the infamous globalist agenda meeting where he sat with the leaders of Saudi Arabia and the whole world, and they touched all the globe together and they're in their globalist way and uh, pushed for one world order. And then, and then, it would be your fault if he got impeached back in September 7, 2018 at a speech in, Minis- in Montana. In Billings, Montana. Montanans, do you remember that? And like, well, what about DeSantis this, DeSantis that? Billionaire GOP donor says he won't support DeSantis because Florida governor doesn't return phone calls. This is a guy named John Katsimatidis. John Katsimatidis is probably one of the biggest swamp monsters on the planet. You want to know what John Katsimatidis is known for? Political activities. Katsimatidis and his wife made contributions to a variety of both Republican and Democratic campaigns. Among Republicans, 60000 to the RNC, blah, 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 Eric Cantor. Wow, Mitt Romney, Eric Cantor, Olympia Snow, Richard Luger. Hmm. Democratic campaigns, Carolyn Maloney, Charlie Rangel, Gerald Nadler, de Blasio. Oh, and here's the best part. You ready? Katsimatidis has been described as a longtime loyal and high-level Clinton donor. Katsimatidis donated a significant sum to the Clinton Presidential Center, thought to be between $100,000 and $500,000. Katsimatidis was a member of Hillary Clinton's finance team during her 2008 campaign for the Democratic presidential nomination. Saying in February 2007 of Clinton, she's unstoppable. She's got such a machine. Katsimatidis hosts a number of fundraising dinners with Bill Clinton at his home in New York. Yeah, you see, if I was Governor DeSantis, I wouldn't be returning this guy's phone calls either. I wouldn't be returning this guy's phone calls ever. And let's just review. Who was it that pushed back against the feds when Donald Trump was leading the feds? 15 days to slow the spread of three jabs to keep your job. If you don't give resistance to this, At the state level, they're going to do absolutely more. People need to be taught why America was founded, what the principles that made our country unique were. They need to be taught that our rights do not come from government. They come from, or Trump, they come from God. Ever heard Trump talk about God? When a society like ours veering away from the truth, those who tell the truth will face fire. That type of society goes after truth tellers more than anything. And look at at what Trump's doing. He's going after a truth teller. Threaten their power in times like these. There's no substitute for courage. Please, somebody find me the link where, where Governor DeSantis has ever said to this day one negative thing about Donald Trump. He could, given that he's been attacked mercilessly by the man for no good reason, even after supporting him for all these years standing up for the people of Florida. Founding fathers didn't believe in pushing God out of every institution. If you are still of the belief that four more years of Trump are a better choice than Governor DeSantis, I hope Governor DeSantis stays here in Florida. I truly do at this point because... I don't think the American people have the ability to appreciate 
what Governor DeSantis would bring. I truly don't. I don't think they have the ability to understand what states' rights means or to take any personal responsibility for your state, Michigan, Minnesota, Washington, Pennsylvania, Arizona. No personal responsibility. All your solutions lie in Washington, D.C., don't they? Because it has to be Trump, Trump in D.C. to fix things. You can't fix things yourselves like Florida has. See, the last, you know, you can talk about whatever you want as far as, quote unquote, the country goes. Things have been spectacular in Florida with Governor DeSantis in charge. Great place to live. We love it here. We love it here. And honest to God, if we have to separate, then we separate. But it's it's night and day. It's night and day. And the receipts are out there. This isn't even close. If it's even close in your mind, or you're one of these people that, that said MTG and DJT are, are the solution for the country going forward, you need to have your head checked. You do. You need to have your head checked. Pam Bondi used to be the attorney general for the state of Florida, and she was even part of the team that tried to defend Trump. But when it was clear that Giuliani and that other tall, ridiculous woman who couldn't talk, it, they didn't know what they were talking about. And they were completely uh, ill-equipped to even look into what they were attempting to look into. She had to step away. She'd be an excellent vice president. I can think of a couple of others. Um, Salazar or Luna representatives from Florida, I think would be fantastic running mates if the governor decided to do this. But at this point, I just I just think too many people in America, other than in Florida, believe that all answers lie in Washington, D.C., and that can only be fixed in D.C., and Trump is the only savior. Or some ridiculous story about Governor DeSantis needs to take his turn. I don't get that part either. Can, can somebody explain this to me? Can somebody please explain this to me? Out of one side of his mouth, his supporter, of their mouth, say supporters say Governor DeSantis needs to take his turn. He needs to take his turn. He needs to wait and take his turn. He needs to be vice president. Out of one side of their mouth, but then out of the other side of their mouth, they want to call him all sorts of names, like a globalist and a, a secret Illuminati, skull and bones, all this bullshit. So which is it? Would he be a good vice president? Should he wait his turn? Or is he just, you know, as bad as a Democrat, even though it's literally Trump that has supported Democrats. The people supporting Trump have supported Democrats. Trump has had Democrat friends his whole life. Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton, went off on a golf outing, posing with porn stars while he had his wife at home with a baby. I mean, your values are so warped. Trump and Z values are so freaking warped, I can't even wrap my head around how you cannot see it. When you actually see a real conservative, a good, decent, God-fearing Christian conservative, it doesn't register. That's It's just mind-blowing. So, anyway, but go ahead and continue to focus on chemtrails and make-believe stories about... Uh, you know, how spike proteins and the uh, mud flood are creating all sorts of uh, contamination of the flat earth and it's causing fish like this to be pulled out of rivers because that's, you know, clearly the most important thing we need to look at. Those of you who have half a brain, though, please, don't take what I said personally. God bless you for joining us at Patreon. I very much appreciate it. Have a happy Sunday. Like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you guys next time.